POV there, according to Kayade, point of view from <laughs> Professor Pastor Tommy. Uh, but that's the conversation which we're having next is on the economy and how we can grow this economy. As you're well aware, he is right on point there in terms of the conversation around revenues in recent times. Uh, VAT, that's value added tax, has been a big one. Now it's federal government borrowings as well. Uh, big talk around there as well. Uh, so what can we do to ensure that we avoid a debt trap? We're able to increase our revenues, not by manipulating, but by actual production. And um, what are the things that we as a people, and not just government now, what are the things that ordinary, everyday Nigerians can do to make sure that the focus is on production and they contribute their quota to growing the economy. Well, Dr. O.K. Kichuku, Executive Director of Development Specs Academy, is our guest at this point. Good morning and welcome, sir. Good morning. I don't know what your thoughts were when you saw Professor Pastor Tomi expressing so much passion mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know, almost frustrated at the fact that, you know, our focus seems to be on the wrong things. People have talked about that in different ways. They talk about the fact that we're focused on sharing a cake that is diminishing rather than looking for how to get more ingredients to bake, to bake a bigger cake. cake. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Why do we keep, uh, keep, to, 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 to keep losing focus or losing our way in terms of uh, how to actually make this cake bigger? The, the point, the correct point Pat is making is that we are focusing on not just distribution, but consumption. You can distribute and produce with it. They give three of us a 300 million naira, 100 million naira each. You set up a factory, he sets up um, a farm, I set up a, an ICT company. We're producing, we're employing people. But it is consumption. You collect, you eat. That's the issue. No wealth creation is going on. So Pat's point, I agree with him. But beyond that, let us also look at the broader issues around the economy because there's always a tendency to pick one item and pretend that that's a crisis. In the economy today, production as a concept does not exist among those who manage uh, policies. And that's why the debate, like Pat has said, is about uh, sharing. And when you share, you consume. The environment in which you're sharing, these are the indices or the characteristics of that environment. What will enable production is not taking place. We're supposed to diversify that economy, but diversification means adding value, not just exporting raw materials. So if you export more cocoa yam today, that's extra income, but look at the value chain. Cocoa yam is produced by local farmers. Supposing you turn it to powder, you now must set up a factory. That's a new set of people who will work, packaging, etc. So a value chain goes down that will move a lot of people into employment and simultaneously, Increase revenue coming from outside. But when all you're doing is collecting raw material and sending out, the only points of impact are the origination points of the raw material and the market. Mm. So everybody else will be waiting to share. We're seeing conversations happen in that regard at the subnational level. Kaede and I just returned from Kaduna. Uh, there was big conversation around, and it's still going on today, Cad Invest. Mm -hmm. um, big conversation around what they are doing in terms of adding value, inviting investors into the state and making things easier. They've seen progress. They've okay. been at this for at least six years now and they've seen progress. I mean, if you go to Kaduna today and you went there six years ago, you'll so certainly you attest that. that the Kaduna you saw six years ago is not the Kaduna of today. We've seen different states adopt different templates. Uh, Cross River, for instance, is another state where you will see the governor investing in factories, uh, rice, grains, cocoa uh, yeah. factory. Uh, Rivers is another state mm -hmm. where the governor is investing heavily in infrastructure. So how all of this, because it, all of them have their faults, we, uh, let me put it that way. There are those who argue that government really has no business in business. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, that would be the criticism for, mm -hmm. say, for Cross River. Um, you know, in the rivers, there'll be huge questions as to how it really, I mean, how do you really ensure that the infrastructure which you provide can really, uh, you know, account for production, so to speak, like, encourage production? What really effect? Needs to happen. Nope. Exactly. Because as we are talking about electricity, which is not a component of some of the infrastructure which has been provided. So mm. these are some of the criticisms. Nonetheless, it is happening. Is it happening at an organized 
in an organized fashion mm -hmm. in such a way that it affects what actually comes to national coffers and state coffers? These are the questions in such okay. a way to mm -hmm. affect the lives of everyday people. These are some of the questions. You mentioned two states, but I'll first go back to the statement. Three, actually. Three. Well, yeah, you mentioned <laughs> three. But two are interesting, and I'll see, you'll see why shortly. I'll go back to the statement that government has no business in business. I don't share that view. Government has no business in businesses that are set up for patronage. So it's not bad in itself if you have a competent manager of a state or national economy going into a viable venture. It's done all over the world. Now, you mentioned, you say you, you went to Kaduna. I came back from Kaduna yesterday. It's interesting. So, so did we. <laughs> yes, that's what you said. And you mentioned the state I was in for about a week under the Nigerian Army Resource Center program. But let me get on to the matter of um, government in business. Take in Aquabom, for instance. That's another it, state? Yes. There was the view that you, there, this species of... Um, Tomato cannot be grown in that area. It's very wet. It's all in the north. Aquai bomb today is on the verge of, um, what do you call it, exporting. It has a pencil... From their grain farm. Yes, their grain it, has a, farm. it has a, a pencil manufacturing company. He has set up businesses that are being well run. It's not just about revenue. It's about the fact that the population of the state is being migrated into the income earning segment of the demographics. So it's about... First of all, terrain analysis. In this environment, what can we do to drive employment? Answer number one, let's identify the areas that services are needed. Number two, do we have the competencies? If the answer is no, how do we secure the competencies? Three, what is the ideal location for this line of businesses we are trying to set up? Any state governor who answers these questions correctly will be successful. In the mm -hmm. states you're mentioning, they were relatively well answered in the particular instance of Aquabom, yes. So you then see that when debates begin, and people are talking about small components of the national economy as responsible for our crisis, it is a grave error. If you take, for instance, the crisis we have today on the foreign exchange uh, platform, the question you ask yourself, assuming you appoint a new CBN governor, Will that change the value of the Naira? Will it remove the fact that we're not productive? Will it give you electricity? Mm. So you find that when we, uh, what do you call it, uh, when we um, itemize and misinterpret, the delusion spreads within the populace that this is a problem. You know, speaking, of a populace, populace, speaking of the populace, pardon yeah. me, I mean, you, you've talked about the CBN Forex. I mean, those are issues we'll also touch on eventually. But let me fast forward a bit. So, I mean, just imagine some of those production activities are encouraged in some states and they're established. But take a look at this. Earlier on, we were talking about vaccine production. And okay. the DJ of NIMA said categorically that, you know what, it's actually better, cheaper to import, to bring in these vaccines than produce them, develop them in-house, essentially saying the manufacturing process in-house, developing and manufacturing is way expensive. And I mean, from what we've done so far, it's not even working, but it's cheaper to bring them in, get donations. Now talk about businesses. We had a conversation with Katina State Governor and he was referencing a product uh, that a businessman wanted to uh, go into in Nigeria. And, and, and the plea for him to government is increase, um, you know, duties on importation on this product so that at least the ones we produce in-house mm -hmm. can, can be, survive. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. comparatively, competitive in the market, right? But guess what? In the next legislation, the duty was even slashed further, essentially saying <laughs> this business will <laughs> shut down. Mm -hmm. So do you think we're at that point really where we have connected the populace with the things we're trying to produce in-house such that they can actually go to the market and say, you know what, I want Nigerian this, Nigerian that, because one, it's cheaper, the quality is better. Do you think we've been able to connect that one? No, the connection is not about preaching to the populace to be patriotic. It's, by, it's about pre producing a product they'll be eager to go for. It's as simple as that. The market forces are at play. Mm -hmm. Vaccines are international products. Cars are international products. You can't, the glasses I'm wearing, uh, not, you can't say Nigerian glasses, therefore I go for a slightly cheaper one. Now, yeah, what, but, but, but it, our taste is, is a big deal. Um, our elite... Are they really interested? Because they, sometimes it's not about, yes, the majority of the populace, uh, you know, how will I put it? The majority of the populace will always consider economic factors. Can I afford it? Is, is it cheaper? 
I mean, if you're living on, on a salary, a fixed income, for instance, you always have to put those considerations when you're making a budget. I'm not saying that the elite, mm -hmm. you know, uh, need to be frivolous with their money. Mm -hmm. But they can be more intentional about saying, you know, the things I want to purchase must be made in Nigeria because they can afford it. Uh, and sometimes patriotism should matter. Uh, the, the, the question is whether they have been able, instead, what, what we tend to see is that, you know, they t tend to want to show off by telling us where, you know, certain things this were This thing bought. came in from so, -so and so Exactly. Please. I agree with that. But I'll go back to the earlier point he was making about uh, connecting the populace. You see, the, the, you're talking about the average person patronizing Nigerian products. You raise the issue of the cost of producing vaccines. There is an important distinction to make between ability to produce and, ab and ability to use and be viable. You don't need, you know what it will take to set up a vaccine factory in the short term? If you're dealing with an emergency, if Nepal has taken light, that's not the time to go to buy a generator. You buy it before then. What I'm leading up to is that if we decide to put down probably X number of billions to set up a factory, the question to ask is how long will it take for one vaccine to come out? But you know, we're in an emergency situation with Precisely. our economy as well. So while dealing with the fact that you need vaccines right now, Medium term, you begin now to set up a factory. The factory should have been there all along. It wasn't there all along. Now, that's not, that's not what to set out to do while people are sick. You begin it. There must be such facilities. But right now, what you need is, is to have vaccines to give them. So they go together. But mistake arises when those who take decisions, take decisions, short-term decisions, and forget to invest in the medium and long term. We we'll import 16 billion naira worth of vaccines, but we expect that in the next 36 months, in the next 24 months or 12 months, we'll have a vaccine factory. Now, that's the way to go. So that is it. Now, the quest test of the elite, if, if all of us are ministers here, we have our private test. The elite in government is different from the elite living his private life on his own expenses from his sweat. He determines how to spend now, the elite in public office has a duty to drive the local economy, and that's by creating opportunities, which is the point we're talking about. And in Austin, for instance, if you buy more of his cars, you will employ more people. If a policy is made on car importation that drives him out, it's a different matter. But there's also, there are also issues of regulation that has created a, another crisis. Nigeria also has signed a lot of our bilateral agreements, which includes trade relations and which in some instances actually forbid what will look like protectionism. That look, you're protecting your thing. But you see, the government has to take key decisions and put its, 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 its foot down, as was done in India. I'm, I'm sorry, before we take this to Lagos, I mean, you said something, I just wanted to be clear. So the elite in government and individual elites. But you know that the individual elites considerably have more influence, more power than the elites in government. And there's certainly more. Yes, there's certainly more. A, so a number. <laughs> the elites in government, can't, they can't do it alone, really. In fact, you need more of the elites, the individual elites, to pull their power such that you can now get more consumption of locally produced goods. So shouldn't this be a joint battle? As it it should be a joint battle, but it's not by preachment. People have a right to determine how to spend their money. I make no apologies about that. Now, it is the state, legislation, Evidence of goodwill in the interest of the nation that will compel some degree of compliance, some degree of patronage. Today, you have Tata all over India. When he started, he was a ranchable machine. Somebody took that decision. It's not because the elite arrived at a consensus to be of good behavior. No. It's because somebody in a policy decision position took that position, made it, uh, reinforced it, patronized the place, the capacity grew, more jobs were taken. Today, Tata is an international brand. That has to happen here. But the, the, the element of appealing to, to the elite, where has it ever worked? The elite is um, it's living as it suits it. Okay. And well, we'll well, Dr. Kichuku, if, if you would permit me, my, my apologies, uh, Dr. Kichuku. You know, there, there are a number of things that you have raised in this conversation, and I find them quite interesting. For instance, I remember, uh, I don't know if it's something that can be used now, but I remember that I was in the 
government, I think in the 70s or 80s, and the federal government at the time legislated that if you're a government official, you would only drive vehicles that were assembled in Nigeria. I don't know how helpful you think that can be in the scheme of things. You also talked about the fact that, you know, um, we ought to have a, a vaccine production company, but we don't have it now, but we, we indeed, we had it. We had, uh, you know, uh, situations where we produced vaccines locally within Nigeria, and that tapered away over time. The question that I'm trying to draw from all of this, Dr. Kechuku, is how do we ensure, because you also referenced it in the fact that there are policies and regulations that seem to stifle uh, businesses, how do we ensure that when we initiate a policy, it is able to carry the economy for the long term, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line. Once, you know, right where you sat, we had uh, uh, an official of uh, National Association of Small and Medium Enterprises. He said the reason that imported goods seem to be cheaper than the ones locally made is for the same reason that you raised, regulations and policies. So how do we ensure because unless we are able to use policies and regulations to, en to encourage local production of things, uh, raising the stakes of our economy might be a hard sell, don't you think? Yeah, you have a point there. There was a time that law existed um, requiring all government functionaries to use um, the POJO, which was assembled, not really made in Nigeria. Yeah, the policy worked. And the idea is to avoid ostentation at, at government expense. And also to encourage that company because I think he had um, a plant in Abuja and a lot of distribution points all over the country. That policy can be reintroduced. You recall the controversy that trailed the attempt of the federal, uh, no, 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 of the National Assembly when this uh, last assembly before last was about to buy vehicles. It ran into quite a number of billions. Everybody cried out. They said you should go and um, um, patronize innocent. The controversy raged. But looking at it, can it be done? Yes, should it be done? Yes. It, it is what will develop private and local uh, companies. Peter B. did it in, in Anambra State. He patronized the innocent. At that time, the man was assembling bicycles. He said, can you rejig your factory to produce cars? He said, yes, including four-wheel drive. He said, yes. The state government patronized them. And, then, and so that is doable. That should be done. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, I agree on that level. The, I don't quite recall the second uh, point you made uh, policies and regulations um, that seem to stifle micro, small, and medium enterprises, making locally produced goods and services more expensive than the imported ones. No, the, the point is this you see, a competitive market, there's actually very little you can do other than produce more to outcompete your competitors. And you're operating in a political environment where there are interests. Going back even to the matter of uh, cars, if I'm a vehicle importer who have been supplying to the National Assembly, do you think I will go and lie down and be smoking or drinking while you're trying to set up a local producer to knock me out of business? It's a competitive arrangement where interests are at stake. Now, to drive national interests, you must also have a kind of stakeholder consensus. So right now, all textile industries in the country are out. These textile firms should have been earning us a lot of foreign exchange, so we don't just depend on oil. They are out completely. The, the one in uh, Nasarawa? No, no, Nasarawa. Um, what's the gold state? Zamfara. Zamfara, yes. You go there, it has the electricity the facilities there has capacity to supply the entire state. It is out of business. There used to be a textile company in Kaduna. All of them are down. Assuming they are in place. Assuming the farms are in place, our sources of exchange, foreign exchange will be diverse and the value will drop, or the value of the Naira will rise. But you see, when local companies send in products to the same market, better versions of which exist that are coming in from outside, they will not get into business. That is a crisis. Well, and that's the, the element of, that brings that, in also... My, my apologies, Dr. Kajiko, but I think that's where the challenge is. And do you think it is possible for us to legislate made in Nigeria primarily as opposed to the imported ones? Because perhaps if we did that, if we all agreed, I mean, you talked, you cited the example of Tata, uh, you know, all over the place in India today. Earlier in the week, Hardy and I, Chamberlain here, were citing the example of phones, China phones that started, maybe, the, yeah, 2000, 
2020, 21 years, about just about the time that GSM was introduced into the country. The phone, the China phone, so to speak, were nothing to write home about. But now it's almost like anyone who wants to produce, you know, mobile phones, they have to go to China. So isn't it possible for us to say? Let's patronize primarily Nigerian so that the, and, and make it difficult, perhaps even more expensive for, lo, for foreign products to come into the country in order to encourage local producers of everything we have. Yes, it's possible to say it. You ask, is it possible for us to say it? My answer is yes, we can say it. The problem is that can we enforce it? That's actually the issue. Enforcement is the issue, but beyond the enforcement, do we have the capacity? You see, the crisis in the economy is multifaceted. If you and I want to set up a paper grinding uh, business, we'll buy the, uh, the machine and then we'll look for how to get a small generator. So already the rate at which we are engaging is pushing our cost way above what others who are going to compete with us from, with products from other places, the kind of cost they have is lower than ours. It is not magic. It's not witchcraft that's making our goods more expensive. It is the challenge of production, the high cost of production, security issues involved, all the challenges in the market. Sometimes, in some cases, multiple taxation and harassment from regulatory agencies. That is where to worry about. That is, those are the things to worry about. But to focus squarely on legislation, on advising the people, it will take us too far. The agencies that are supposed to enable SMEs, what incentives are they giving? How much, for instance, investments would you say banks have made in SMEs in the last 10, 15, 20 years? Those are things to consider. So specifically to the point you raised, is it possible for us to say patronize only made in Nigerian goods? Yes, we can say that. Is it possible to enforce it? That is a challenge. Mm. Well, we'll see what measures are put in place uh, and, and how we continue to com continue that conversation to grow the economy and what is really being done, whether it, it should eventually have an effect. But I do know that conversations around the economy are an ongoing one. We have to thank you for contributing uh, your point of view to it this morning. <laughs> Dr. Ok Kichuku is the Executive Director of Development Specs Academy. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily. Thank you. We have a few of your mails. We're not going to go without taking them. Abdul Wariz, I haven't seen this name before. Abdul Wariz, Sholanke, talking about VAT collection. He says, this VAT issue needs to be resolved. Which component of VAT is really the issue? There are three components, intrastate, interstate, international. What quantum is realized from each component? Which component should federal government retain or control? Who does the sharing formula favor more? Well, these are the issues um, that Abdul Wariz is raising for resolution. Oh, very important. Uh, but this is a name you've seen before, Professor Inakena. And this is on COVID-19 vaccination. And it says, insofar government cannot force people to be vaccinated, and those doing so must realize that their neighbors, colleagues at work, and people they will encounter daily have a right not to be infected as well. Mm. Well, this one is from Harry Awonano, who says, It is also morally wrong for potential and real carriers of diseases to be allowed entry to infect others. Governments globally should strive to render this duty to their citizens. Why do some countries not have enough vaccines? Why are nations poor? Why do some countries not prioritize biosecurity? Why do some citizens adopt fraudulent practices as a religion? Should, rich, should those rich countries not protect their citizens on the altar of morality? Morality is a coin that has two sides. That's Harry Ono, uh, uh, his own contribution to the program this morning. I guess that's where we wrap it up this morning on Sunrise Daily. I'm Ayo Makinde. Have a wonderful day and a glorious weekend. Oh, we see your mails. We see more of them. Sorry, we can't take. That's the only one we can. The only ones we can take for now. Thank you so much for watching this week. For staying with us, I'm Malpe Ogunyese, and I'm Kaido Kikulu. Have a great weekend.